Well, this will be a very short video where we basically are going to look at a couple of potential examples of splines and we'll determine whether or not they are splines. But um, first, let's talk about a couple of one or two drawbacks of the degree one spline interpolation. This is a picture of the spline, <clears throat> and I marked x1 to x, x1, I, sorry, xi and xi plus one right here. One of the drawbacks is if the x value you're trying to estimate the y value for is between xi and xi plus one, well, the value returned depends only on two data points. You could have a thousand or a million data points, and the only two points are the ones that kind of surround, encapsulate that point. So that's a drawback. Um, two data points, which means one segment. Just one line segment is determining the approximation um, given an x. <clears throat> and then another one is um, that all these points we call knots, those are the internal knots. Internal knots, meaning we're excluding the first one and the last one. <clears throat> the internal knots are, I was going to say, yeah, or are or have sharp corners. And what does that mean when you usually hear sharp corners? That usually means it's not a, a smooth curve and it's not a differentiable curve. And in life, we love to work with differentiable functions. They're the nicest ones to work with, and I think they, those types of functions will provide the best possible estimates. So basically, that's a, the advantage is very simple to implement, as you saw in the very short pseudocode that we had. But these are two considerable drawbacks. Okay, let's look at a couple, <clears throat> a couple of examples. Three, I guess. And the question is, here's a spline definition, perhaps, and here's another one, and here's the third one. I want to know if it, each one of these is a degree one spline. The first thing I'm going to look at is only the domains. I'm going to ignore the functions for a minute. Because remember, a spline has to be defined on a closed bounded interval. Do these two, is the union of these two intervals make a closed bounded interval? I think it does. It's every point between negative one and one. And this one, negative one, negative two to negative one, where negative one is included here but not here. Zero is included here but not here. So yes, this is a closed bounded interval from negative two to positive one. We're not missing any points in between. And this is negative one to, ooh, negative one, to one. And then this one includes one, this one doesn't, but it includes everything to the right of one, up to two. So this is the closed bounded interval from negative one to two. So that part's good. <clears throat> so now let's take a look at them individually. Well, I'm gonna graph that. I don't even have to graph it, do I, for the first one? But I will. Okay, from negative one to zero, It's that. And then between 0 and 1, it's the square root of x, which looks like that. It's continuous. See, I didn't even have to draw that, did I? It's not linear because that's not producing a line segment. It's a, it's a curve, right? It's not a straight line connecting 0, 0 to 1, 1. So, no. Not. <clears throat> All right, the second one. Now I got three things to worry about here. Okay, so the first the first portion, let me let me draw a graph. And from negative two to negative one, from negative two, from negative two to negative one, it's this line, the line that has a y-intercept of negative two. But it, I don't start it there because the line is old, segment is only from negative 2 to negative 1. And it has a slope of negative 1. So it would be 
that. Then between negative 1 and 0, it's just x. Okay, oops. And then the third one is between 0 and 1, it is a y intercept is 1, and the slope is negative 1. Should have used a different color, but you can see that it is, they are all segments, but it's not continuous. So therefore, this is not a spline of degree one. Remember, all they have to meet, all the interior knots have to have two segments going into them. And this one doesn't. It goes here, but now we jump. It's not continuous. So that's not a spline of degree one. Then the next one, <clears throat> maybe I will do it down here. It goes from where? Negative 1 to 2. Okay, so from negative 1 to 1, we have a negative 1 to 1. Um, if I multiply that through, I get 1 fourth plus... 1 fourth x. So the y-intercept, which is in, in between here, so the y-intercept is a fourth. And the slope is 1 over 4. So I'm going to go like, let's see, at negative 1, it's a 0. And that would be a, a value of a half. So we got a straight line segment. This is the point negative 1, 0. I know I'm not labeling the axes. You can do that in your homework. And this is the point 1, 1 half. And then between 1 and 2, you've got 1 half times 2 minus x, which is 1 minus 1 half x. So that would be a, it would be a y-intercept of 1 if we were, but we're not starting it there. And that line would go right through there. So yeah, that is. All you really need to verify, if you're given something and there's, you're asking, asked if it's a degree one spline, is make sure that each one of these things is linear. Like this, 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 this. And this, but not this one. And then at each knot, which is each internal point, make sure that the two segments meet there. So all I needed to do, to, I know that's a line, I know that's a line. So where do they meet? They meet at x equals 1. So when I plug in a 1 to this function and a 1 into this function, I better get the same value. And I do in this case, but I do not in this case here, where we got different values. <clears throat> So fairly easy examples, it'll be easy homework problems for you.